number one in the Caribbean where tourism is concerned. Now that they have had the downturn, they have spent more money in marketing the destination. I think Grenada needs to do a little more of that. And, you know, they are, the minister certainly, I know, is very aware of it. But as you know, we have our challenges financially. So, you know, they're doing their best. What else do you think Grenada could be doing right now, uh, creative-wise, that we're probably not doing? That's a good question, creative-wise. Um, I think we still have to con concentrate on marketing the destination. You're doing more and more and more of that because in the past I don't think we have done enough. Certainly when the American Airlines flight started um, late last year, we should have done our marketing much earlier than we did. And we, you know, we were a little late in doing that. I think some lessons have been learned by that. And I think really the key to the whole thing is marketing and also trying to give more, more attractive prices for the accommodation and, and pass passages into the islands. Carnival is two months away and with it comes an influx of visitors for Grenada's biggest cultural festival. Mr. McIntyre believes things will look up for the season. Um, with the additional flights that Air Jamaica are putting on out of, out of Kennedy in New York, I think that will help, help the overall situation. Air, Air, um, American Airlines have their three flights and they possibly may go up to additional two. We don't know about that yet. But I think all in all out of the United States, the airlift is pretty good into the island. Certainly out of the UK is very good because we have the three airlines coming in. We have, as I say, BA, um, Virgin and Monarch and that's that they, they all have lots of capacity right now. Prime Minister the Honourable Tillman Thomas has stressed the importance of taking the necessary steps to reduce the impact of any event by being prepared. During an address to mark the start of the 2009 Atlantic hurricane season, the Prime Minister said it is, a much, it is much better to take a proactive approach by beginning the preparation process now. During the hurricane season, the safety of public shelters is always a major concern. The assessment emergency shelters around the island has been completed and the list will be announced shortly. Another source of concern is the distribution of emergency supplies. I am therefore considering giving the mandate for distribution to the Red Cross, churches and NGOs. I believe that based on our experience with Hurricane Ivan, those agencies will facilitate a more efficient and effective distribution of emer emergency supplies. Prime Minister Thomas added that we need to prepare to mitigate the impact of any hazard we may experience this season. He says the reality is that during the season we can be affected by either a storm surge, flooding, landslides or high winds. We must therefore develop a family disaster plan and make sure all members of the family are familiar with the plan. Brothers and sisters, our government has appointed a national disaster coordinator and two community program officers. I urge you to fully support NADMA as the agency endeavors to revitalize the district and community groups around the country. These groups, if properly organized, will enable us to better serve our communities in case a hurricane strikes. Forecasters predict that the 2009 hurricane season is most likely to be 50% near normal. The 2009 Atlantic hurricane season began on June 1st and runs until November 30th. A 25% probability of an above normal season is expected and also a 25% probability of a below normal season. Forecasters say there is a 70% chance of having 9 to 14 named storms, of which 4 to 7 could become hurricanes, including 1 to 3 major hurricanes in Category 3, 4 or 5. The Grenada Rural Enterprise Project conducted a one-day session at the National Stadium on Thursday to look at its weaknesses and successes in an effort to rectify or build on them in future projects. Since the project came into existence more than six years ago, about $13 million have been spent on various projects in the rural communities. Finance Minister Nazim Burke, who delivered the feature address, said the government's flagship program was created because of dwindling preferential treatments from Caribbean countries, as well as other factors affecting the international community. While it was intended to target those in the rural community whose livelihoods have been compromised, the idea was to ensure it was both sustainable and gender sensitive. While we take it for granted 
More than 50% of the households in this country are headed by single mothers who are fighting every day to put their children through school and who have not had the support of some of our men in ways that they ought to be supporting and assisting and providing in the support and sustenance of their children. But women have had to be doing it, in some cases, all alone with great courage and at great sacrifice. And therefore, it is absolutely important that whatever we do, we ensure that opportunities are created in a gender-sensitive manner, recognizing the role and contribution that women make. The program also, based on the objective that we set out, indicates the need to promote community development. In other words, GREP is a rural poverty reduction project funded by the CDB to the tune of 2.2 million U.S. dollars, the International Fund for Agricultural Development at 4.2 million U.S., and the Government of Grenada at 1 million U.S. dollars. Acting Project Coordinator Edward Fide gave an assessment of the overall implementation of the project. In year seven of the project, 78% of the funds have been, have been disbursed. Over 87% of community participation and support activities implemented. 91% of activities under the Rural, Finance, Finance, Rural Investment Fund and 67% of enterprise development activities were implemented. The enterprise development has only been marginally implemented and the Rural Financial Services has not functioned. From late 2008, there has been a tremendous improvement in the rate of implementation and it is projected by, that by the loan closing date of December 2009, 95% of, of the funds approved at appraisal would have been disbursed. Assessment. And that's where we end this edition of the GIS Week in Review. On behalf of all those who made it possible, I'm Leslie Ann Johnson. Thank you for viewing.